Here's a question for you. Is EIGRP a proprietary routing protocol or an open routing protocol? And is it proprietary or can we use open source implementations of EIGRP? In this video, I'm gonna show you a topology consisting of a free range routing router. In other words, an open source routing implementation and Cisco devices running EIGRP and exchanging routes with one another. Notice this device is running Ubuntu, but has a Cisco-ish shell and allows you to run EIGRP between Cisco devices and a Linux open source implementation. So I'm gonna be exchanging routes between Cisco devices and this Linux-based router. This is based on open EIGRP, as defined in RFC 7868. Cisco's Enhanced Interior Gateway Routing Protocol, or EIGRP, has been a proprietary protocol for many, many years. But Cisco has opened EIGRP and made it available for other vendors. You can see the details in RFC 7868. Now packet pushers and others have commented on this open EIGRP version. So EIGRP is now an open standard, but it does come with caveats. There are restrictions, such as not supporting stub areas. And there's been various complaints about these limitations in open EIGRP versus Cisco's proprietary implementation. You can listen to this Packet Pushers podcast if you want to get more information about why Cisco opened up EIGRP, why Cisco held back on Stub, and other information about open EIGRP. Notice this is from April 2013, and this blog entry is also from 2013. Some of us have perhaps read about Cisco opening up EIGRP, but it's been difficult perhaps to get EIGRP working between Cisco devices and non-Cisco devices. Now, Undrush has released a GNS3 appliance that makes it really easy to get a free range routing appliance running in GNS3. Have a look at my other videos where I show you how to import this appliance into GNS3 and get it working and advertising routes with Cisco devices. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to run EIGRP between Cisco devices and an FRR router. So in GNS3, I already have an FRR router. I'm gonna drag that to the workspace and I'm gonna drag two Cisco iOS routers to the workspace. I'm gonna start the devices up and display their consoles. As you can see, the FRR router is booting up and so are the Cisco devices. While I'm waiting for them to boot up, I'm going to cable the network Create a simple network as follows. FRR router has booted, so I'll log in as FRR, password is FRR. This router has an interface that's very similar to Cisco IOS. So a lot of the commands that you're used to will work on this device. Interface, question mark. I can see a list of interfaces. This is gonna be my first ethernet interface, and this is my second ethernet interface. So in my GNS3 topology, I'll change this to ENS3, click OK. Change this to ENS4, click OK. So my first ethernet interface, no shut. IP address, 10.1.1.2. This uses CIDR notation, so you configure the IP address as follows. Interface, ENS4. IP address, 10.1.2.1 slash 24, no shut. So I've got my interfaces configured with IP addresses. Let's enable EIGRP. So once again, type router, select your routing protocol. Select AS number. 
very similar to Cisco. Network. Specify the networks that we're going to enable EIGRP on. I'll enable it on both of these networks. So show IP EIGRP interfaces. I can see that EIGRP is running on both of these interfaces. A lot of output here, but notice we can see interface, bandwidth, delay, no peers at the moment, smooth round trip timer, hollow timer, hold time, a lot of information. Show IP EIGRP neighbor. We have no neighbors at the moment. So go on to Cisco One. So host Cisco One. Interface gigabit zero zero, no shut. IP address 10111, slash 24 mask, router EIGRP 100. Network, and I'll enable it that way. No order summary. Notice an adjacency has already been formed. So on Cisco, show IP EIGRP neighbor. We have a neighbor relationship between a Cisco router an open source router, and I should say EIGRP neighbors. Notice there's my neighbor relationship to Cisco One. Yes, Cisco Two. So, host Cisco Two. Interface gigabit zero zero. No shunt. IP address ten one two two slash twenty four mask. Router EIGRP one hundred network, and I'll do it this way follow the Cisco convention, and that's actually the wrong network, so that should be 10.1.2.0. No order summary. Neighbor relationship has already been formed. So show IP EIGRP neighbor. We have one neighbor relationship to 10.1.2.1. On the open source router, show IP EIGRP neighbor. We have two neighbor relationships. Show IP route. We can see that we have this route and this route learnt via EIGRP. Notice the administrative distance is 90. This route, however, is the selected route and has been put into the forwarding information base. Because this is directly connected, it's a better route than this. On this router, I'll create a loopback. So IP address quadruple one. Interfaces come up. Show IP OSPF interface brief. And sorry, I should be looking at ERGRP. So show IP ERGRP interfaces. We only have that interface configured for ERGRP. So let's look at our ERGRP configuration. Router ERGRP 100, network 1000. Show IP ERGRP interfaces. ERGRP is enabled on the Gigabit interface and the loopback interface. So on this router, show IP route. Notice we've learnt about the loopback through EIGRP and I can ping that loopback. On Cisco 2, show IP route. We've learnt about this network through EIGRP. So this router can ping 10.1.1.1, which is Cisco 1. Back on the FRR router, show IP route. There's our routing table. We have this route in the routing table, and the router can ping the loopback of Cisco One once again. I'll type show IP route again. Notice we have that route in the routing table on Cisco Two, so we should be able to ping the loopback of Cisco One, which we can, and we can also trace to the loopback of Cisco One. On Cisco Two, I'll create a loopback of quadruple two, slash 32 mask, advertise that network in EIGRP. So show IP EIGRP topology. Those are the networks in the topology database. We've got that network added. On the FRR router, show IP route. Notice we see this network and the router can ping the loopback of router one. Show IP route here. Notice the route is available on Cisco one. So 
I can ping the loopback of Cisco 2 and trace to the loopback of Cisco 2. So that was a simple demonstration showing you the use of open EIGRP between an open source routing protocol implementation and Cisco iOS devices. For more information, have a look at the FR routing user guide. There's a lot more information available in the documentation about what this router supports. But I think it's great to see a practical implementation of open EIGRP so that you can see EIGRP working between Cisco devices and other vendor devices. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel.